So many people probably don't know this, um, but about seven years ago, maybe six, six, maybe five, but you get my point. A while back, I had met Scott, and uh, I met Scott with a couple of my other friends, and we would have just quick little interactions. And Scott may not be privy to this, but everyone called him the alien guy like oh that's a dude who knows so much about what aliens and ufos because scott always came in with this information that no one had ever heard and it was always incredibly like scientifically it made sense everything he was saying is like oh, shit i didn't know that that's interesting so for for quite a while you know maybe six months scott was the alien guy <laughs> and Scott, you uh, you have more, and I've been waiting for this because we've been doing this show for almost a year, and you haven't ah. brought up a single thing about UFOs, but now you've well, got it, something it, to talk about. Yeah, it's hard to be completely consumed by it once you've kind of been vindicated, and I say that as a person who I there is no such thing as Bigfoot, there are no such thing as ghosts. There are, you know, I'm going to, and some people go, yeah, but my grandmother, or I went to some house, you take a picture of that, and then you come back to me, and I, that's why Ghostbusters is so much fun, okay? The, there are many things that we have passed down through the millennia, um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw deities into that thing. You know, there are many things that we've somewhat been able to never verify, or we've never been able to take a picture of. Or you request God's help, and he apparently doesn't give you another sandwich, even though you wanted another Subway sandwich, and you deserved one. Those kinds of things never manifested themselves, regardless of prayer. He will help you yeah. open a social media company, though. <laughs> yeah, that, that's or, or, or make a fellow company. But the one thing that has, you know, our government has never taken the time to go look for Bigfoot, nor have any credible scientists and there are reasons for these things. But on the same aspect, after we detonated some of the first nuclear weapons, all of a sudden, there were these stories. There were these things, whether it be the glowing orbs of the, quote, Foo Fighters, if you don't know where that term comes from, or all the way to Roswell, and, and so on and so forth. Even actually going back to um, one of my favorite absolute most unbelievably crazy pictures uh, is uh the when in california and it's like it's 1921 base or basically in 41 um or 1940 anyway so in california there was a, a scare that the japanese were flying in and th so they at that time they had all the uh, all the the big spotlights and all the anti-aircraft shrapnel guns aimed straight up at the sky they were going to knock any of the japs out of the sky when they were coming but when the alarms went off all of a sudden there was one giant floating immovable that was well i say immovable it was moving on its own power shaped like a if you say people say a lozenge what they mean is kind of a you know like a giant tic tac sitting in the sky there's a famous la times picture of all of the uh spotlights trained on this item and little dots of light all around it well those dots of light are air anti-aircraft shrapnel pieces of metal is jagged it actually killed a few people as it fell to the ground as they were pumping thousands of rounds and for some reason this thing in the air would not go down it would not explode it wouldn't do anything now i don't know how many people tell you that well it was a blimp it was also traveling the opposite direction as the shore. It was much larger than a blimp. And see, blimps don't tend to do too well when giant pieces of supersonic shrapnel are blowing up all around them. They tend to deflate. Um, and that's a very famous incident. Um, and since then, and there are older ones and there are old stories, and I'm not going to go into ancient aliens, but if you watch the news, consistently, time after time, they've been giving us these tidbits of information verification on a federal level that incidents in the past in the recent past that have been observed and recorded by data meaning ultraviolet which you know well if as far as heat signatures uh, propulsion radar uh, all kinds of if you know what the FLIR system is on on a camera they even have it on you know, devices you can buy yourself now infrared 
They've, the military has been tracking and watching craft, basically kind of, you know, hovering over battleships, over, you know, cruising fleets, having interactions and almost dogfights with, you know, these things. There's now been released video where the pilots have spoke out about it. The, the U.S. military has said, yes, we don't know what they are. They, 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 sh they do things that we cannot possibly do because they violate the laws of, of physics and gravity. And we, we don't know. And just yesterday or the day before, uh, there was another piece of released footage of weird triangles hovering over the, this another battle fleet from 2019. And, uh, you know, it's, they said, we don't know what they are. They, they're there. They, they come out of the ocean and they take off at 10,000 miles an hour, some of them exiting the atmosphere until we can't track them on radar anymore. That's freaking crazy. And, and you'll see a lot of people say things like, well, it could have been, I didn't know. They've already said, these governments just say, look, they're, they're not Chinese drones. They're not Russian drones. The level of difference in technology that these things display is so far beyond even what we speculate we may be able to do in 100 years or so that it's, it's almost terrifying. And it's also one where we're not controlling our defensive airspace. So these things have finally slipped out with actual government, you know, uh, the Defense Department and the, the CIA and all these, they've revealed that they've actually had groups continuing to study. So for 70 years, over 70 years, we ha there has been dedicated government research and disinformation campaigns associated with these things that we can't explain and i'm not going to say well that's, that's because there's little green men it's them, them bug-eyed guys from just just keep it at the simplest level of all there are things flying around in and outside of our atmosphere that are not ours they're not ours and they've even verified that supposedly they have, you know, they have wreckage from some of these things. Now, it doesn't tell you what they have when they recovered these things. But if our government has invested billions of dollars over periods of time studying this direct phenomenon, and this is not anything like any other thing that our government has ever invested this much time, Blue Book was a complete disinformation campaign. Uh, this it, you got to wonder why have all these governments invested this much time and money? Winston Churchill has said things past presidents that you, you, it didn't matter. Reagan all the way to Carter had a UFO incident. You know, it, it just it's infiltrated our culture to a point where it's almost it was easy for a while to just put this junk aside and say, that's ah, just crazy people. But come on, our government has never told us the complete truth about stuff. You got to wonder why they're telling us now. And at the same time, maybe there's a reason they're kind of letting things slip out. Maybe there's a reason that the Catholic Church decided to, which, by the way, has had some of the best telescopes in history for the last 500 years. The Catholic Church said, we'll convert the aliens to, to Catholicism. We have no problem with it. It doesn't clash with you know Catholicism. You, they're preparing their flock. I mean, there, there are millions of signs out there that say, Come on, people. We know there's shit tons of planets. We know there's a lot, everything out there. Water is plentiful. There's tons of suns, tons of solar systems, tons of Earths. Just because we can't get there doesn't mean that they're there. We know they're there. We just can't get there. So it's become to a point where it, it should just be your interest to pay attention to the fact that these things exist. It doesn't mean that they're not gods. They're not anything else. We don't know what they are. But, man, it sure feels good to, to know that these things are part of our reality, and you need to integrate that at some point and at some level, whether you want to think, you know, you got the far right people go, well, they're demons. They're demons flying around in Tic Tacs. And then you've got the other people who, who are, you know, di disavow it completely and think it's some other government. But, hey, all I can tell you is there are so many verified incidents, like from 2006, the O'Hare, Chicago O'Hare uh, airport incident. I mean, there are so many things that people take the time to look. It, it should be a very interesting thing for a lot of people. And it's fun 
and it's not dark unless you take one of those crazy like well it's the lizard people or they're they're coming to enslave us again or they want our gold now just throw all that crap out and just look at what the the actual stories and the evidence and and our government's reaction to these things it becomes a real interesting pattern that you would only perform unless you were trying to just kind of keep spread things like those crazy people putting on those suits of aliens and all no just have fun with it and 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 realize that it's on the nightly news every once in a while now and uh it's uh it's cool it could mean something important in the future so i for the most part agree with you but it would be kind of a boring show if i didn't play devil's advocate just ask you a couple of these things um so for instance like if there was a being <clears throat> that uh, had the capability to traverse such i mean we're talking the light years um yeah, it, the, 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 the is, amount uh, of distance is irrelevant right i mean yeah exactly um and obviously they would have to have a much higher level of cognitive process than we do why would they care about us like wouldn't they just look at us like we're worms and they would they would pass by and they'd be like oh hey look there's a because if they if they could traverse the universe uh, the galaxy right so but like, i'm it, sure they've seen other living creatures and they'd be like, right yeah, uh, those, it, those and, dudes are weird you know like so let's just, just say by. that anything that we've seen so far doesn't as far as in my opinion doesn't say that these craft are necessarily inhabited with pilots well, they may be doing the exact same thing we do. We send out probes, satellites, and robots. And let's just say that mm. even using some equations, the universe is teeming with life. For over 100 years, we've been smashing out radio signals. Oh, we have, we, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you have 100 light years in every direction, by the way, that you turn on the receiver if you've got a really good one, and you can watch uh, Adolf Hitler <laughs> with a TV signal from like 1930 or whatever, uh, opening the Olympics, oh, or you go back. Send that out. <laughs> well, we did. It sent it out in TV. It was the first TV broadcast was, was the, the Olympics in Germany. <laughs> How you like them apples? And so, and I don't know what the, the date was, but that was one of the first. That's why if you watch the movie Contact, when they get the techno you know, signal back with all the data, it's encoded within a TV signal of Adolf Hitler uh opening the olympics in germany because that was the first television signal so of course that's what they sent back to us was something familiar they wouldn't have known that it was a, <laughs> a horrible supermass murderer but the point of it is we've Apparently been beaming at the time for a either. long time yeah and and the second it's just kind of like it, even if we're in some weird reality where it's like we're the hairless monkey show we are the best television show you could possibly want i mean there's a couple doctor who episodes that kind of go with that like we're just a big oh, tv show everybody. okay I, I'll, I'll grant you that um but here's the other question too um and you pointed out like we like, now everybody has a pretty good camera on them all the time let alone the technology that exists for professional you know or people as well as i'm sure is put on airplanes and, and planes and i mean they have some amazing photographic technology why do we always see just like a weird like speck and it's like that looks kind of like a ball thing and it's bright but it's dark yeah you know, like, well, well say, why, why haven't we got right. anything and that's that a good like... question and there's actually a pretty easy answer for that which i've heard recently kind of espoused by people who are professional photographers if you take a, if you see the moon come up, your eyes can do a, some amazing distance focusing. You can take that small little moon in the sky and focus in on it and make it, you know, within your view, a large part. Now you can do that with a high powered photo lens. Like if you have a really nice camera with a telescopic lens, you can take a nice still photo. But if you were just to use even a high megapixel camera, so you got an, they said the new iPhone 13 or some crap, 14 was going to have a 48 megapixel camera. That's still a flat image. It's not a actual zoomed in telephoto image. 
So if you see something at the sky, your eyes can actually focus in on a distance better than your super expensive camera, unless you had, you know what I mean? Like a full telescopic camera and we're able to perfectly track a moving item. That's a moving you know, object. That's really difficult to do. And so it, you, you kind of, if you've ever tried to no, yeah, I get take that, but like I've seen, you know, um, when I was a kid, in fact, um, I had a poster of like some F-16s that were flying, like while they were flying, like someone took a picture of them from overhead. I mean, so we obviously can take pictures of flying things that are going fast. Like, sure. So why has no one taken a picture? Have you of... ever tried to take a picture of an F-16 flying over you? Well, no, but I'm not a photographer. <laughs> well, right. Ask your photographer what it takes to correctly motion track without blur a, a fly, even if they're subsonic. Ask them what kind of technology it takes. First of all, super high speed rate camera frame yeah, rate yeah second of all you have to track that image you have to match the camera's move speed with the disc you have to do almost some trigonometry to set up your camera well, you don't even need to do that anymore though because you can just record video and then slice but, it frame but, by frame no because your camera is not focused in on those particular items it's just doing a flat focus it's focused it's called infinity it's focused to infinity. Anything that it can focus in on within a certain range becomes focused. But when something's too far, you, 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 it doesn't focus in on it. That's why your eyes can do that, but your camera can't. You literally have to have a super high-end telescopic lens and be able to set tracking to that image. In fact, one of the UFO videos from, I think, 2004 or 5, where there are, there are uh, fighter pilots tracking an object flying across literally a couple feet from the ocean surface which is, is the one actually okay did that happen in 2004 or 5 and then they just showed it but i remember it coming like i remember seeing it like in 2016 or am i thinking of a different well one? there are there are multiple there's a two th there's a 2017 incident with uh the nimitz is is what was one of the big things as far as the release of that footage i don't remember when it was taken but there's one off the california coast where there are multiple uh, pilots. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to get a target lock on it. And it's flying across the surface. And when he gets a target lock, by the way, this is some of the best technology period to, to track and get a target lock on an item for a missile. He, he, you, can, you can pull these up because there's not that many of them. He, he exclaims the joy. He's like, I got it. Woohoo! And he screams like that because his target lock hit. And once that target lock hits on that object, the little X in the middle, the camera perfectly tracks where it's going. It found its target to track and it's locked on. And he did that from a, from a jet trying to go around the same speed as this item. So <laughs> it is extremely difficult to have a telephoto focused tracked item. The computer, a really high end computer had to get in there and find the correct item the moving item, hit it, and then track it and match its speed, the camera speed, and the movement of the lens directly associated with that item. It's really difficult. And I understand okay. people... I will, I will, why, why I will give you photos? that. Well, I'll tell you another thing. A lot of these people who see stuff from a distance, most people misidentify things. 90% or more of people who see something misidentify. And let's say the other, say 5% of those people who saw something None of those people had a camera on them because it's, you know, one of those, well, some redneck. Well, maybe so, but that redneck wasn't carrying a, a camera phone. And the third thing is a lot of these sightings are associated with military bases, nuclear storage, and, and uh, really associated a lot with our nukes. So you got to wonder why, well, why would they be associated with our nukes? Well, if there's one thing that they know how to track where they figured out in the 40s, it's that every nuclear blast emanates gamma radiation. And so when they first set up some of the first radio dishes to, to look at, they were trying to see where the Russians were detonating their first nuclear weapons. And so what they got was they got, uh, the, the, we were getting gamma signals right off the bat. They were like, oh crap, what's going on? Well, it's because there's gamma radiation coming in from all over the place from space. And they didn't know that beforehand, that it was also beaming down from space, but it also goes out to space. So just like our radio signals, the first time we detonated nuclear weapons, 
we sent a very particular kind of EM signature out into space and beforehand, it had not come from us before. It and, could come from our star, but not from planet Earth until that point. And you also said like the Catholic Church has said that they would convert an alien. Yes. See, okay, let me just tell you what I hear. This is this is how feeble my scientific brain is. This is what I hear. Okay, the church is actually lying. And here, here's what I see. And you're talking about gamma rays. The Vatican lie? What are you talking about? I think we're looking at Pope Hulk <laughs> <laughs> being an alien. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean there no, are, the there thing are is, possibilities. No, like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just making a dumb joke, but I think, I, you know, outside of playing devil's advocate, I, I actually, I'm on board. Like, I think that, I think it'd be dumb to assume that there's nothing out there. Like, that's oh, sure. so egotistical. Um, I, 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 and, and so I would say, yeah, like my kid, he's asked me before, aliens exist. I say they probably do, but we've never seen them. And I only say it because I have, I, I still want to see it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. I mean, know, so I, would if I. I. The same, if I have the same, like, principle for my thoughts on God, I should share it with aliens too. Meaning, like, right. I need a little bit of evidence. And I get you, like, some of the videos are crazy. And I hear what those people are saying too. And I have, I have way more belief, obviously, that aliens exist than God exists. Right. Because if you're, if you're taking miracle for miracle, at least we have something to go what the hell is that and we know that it's not ours and people who speculate to say oh it's just i'm telling you there are the possibilities exist way higher that it's just i just think it's just drop bys it's literally just like just like our probes to Mars and yeah, stuff. Yeah, thinking about the whole drone thing, that's actually a really interesting theory. I think that's that's a fairly good like thought process there. Yeah, it, it and it easy. It's easier for that than you know, like the mothership. Although there are some crazy, fully documented, including radar histories of Highliner jets, like one from Japan in the early '80s. And this also includes the head of the guy who was the head of the FFA or the FFA, the FAA at the time. Um, I forget what his John something. I forget what his last name is. But a Japanese pilot with a perfect record as they start to approach like Anchorage, all of a sudden calls in and says, hey, we with another pilot, we've got a giant freaking glowing object with yeah. two smaller yeah. glowing objects flying around us then they looked at the radar signature and guess what they found they said uh Jap J japan 423 or whatever the number was uh we have a flight size of two meaning they saw something buzzing around him over twice the size of a 747 so yeah, i remember that in the whole thing too that you were you started off the whole segment with uh that um Tic Tac looking thing over California. I remember that too. Like I've seen the picture. Like so, yeah. No, you're 100 percent right on those things. And I know you would say, yeah, but okay. So you saw that picture. Isn't that proven? And it, it, it yeah. Like I'm, I'm like 95 percent. I would just, I would love to see. It's the whole Bigfoot thing, you know. Like it's funny well, how now that everyone has cell phones. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like now that everyone has cell phones and everything, like Bigfoot's gone away. Like no one. <laughs> It's not even a, no, a, a no. Conversation. Bigfoot hasn't been away. Right. That's the whole thing. Bigfoot has always been a figment of our imagination and and kind of a mysterious creature that apparently not only can they not get a picture of him, but they also can't find his bones. And if or there's one thing that or, yeah. they can't find anything, there is not one instance of scat, meaning shit, being found and tested for DNA that doesn't turn out to be wolf, deer, bear, coyote, or human. Human. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally how they turn into. No, and I mean, yeah, so 100% like on all of that, totally agree. But I also think, too, that this is one of those things that will save us. And, and I don't mean like aliens are going to bring some technology that are going to change. It'd be cool if they did. Yeah, no. Uh, but I actually think in the the scope of, you know, what we were talking about last segment about how partisan everybody is. This is one of those topics. Like it doesn't matter. You're left. You're right. Whatever. 
there's nothing funner than talking about like conspiracies of aliens and and UFO and the probability of there being life outside. Yeah, and these aren't even conspiracies. Because yeah, okay. conspiracies were before you know, the government was like, you're crazy, you're just... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, and, I, I, and what I meant, conspiracy, I meant, like, the, the discussion of, like, Roswell and stuff like that, some of that. Like, it's really just fun conversation. And I think that's... And you got to ask why the government's been actively studying these things for 70 years. That no was... other, no other, like, you think about what kind of project that the government, the con- that was always considered to be hooey, that the government somehow has invested billions of dollars in research. Yeah, like really, like thorium. It, that would have been a good thing that they could have done that for for years and developed. Yeah, thorium and it's something better. you can have fun with. But, I don't think we're going to be invaded with this. Their planets like this are all over the place. So if you can go from one place to another in the in the snap of a finger, you, they're not here to take our water, our women. They're not here to eat us. They're not here to do anything. I simply just think. There are probably all kinds of little robots flying around out in space that can zip from one side of the universe to the other. They're just bringing back information going, look at those little monkey people. I mean, really, I I don't think it's anything more than that. What you said, though, about how the government is basically saying, yeah, they exist. This is essentially the, you know, all these big groups are like loosening up their um you know they're dog the tinf- yes yes and the tinfoil hat is is not even a thing anymore and it's like yeah we'll show more stuff we're gonna expose you know we're gonna talk more about it you're not crazy to think about it i think that's really interesting that in itself and yeah. you did point to the fact like what does that mean yeah i don't know that's well and that's the, some of the biggest uh, opponents to this have been some of our famous physicists even like neil degrasse tyson and and actually more more prestigious physicist not stephen hawking stephen hawking he'd tell you right now there is no god and aliens are everywhere and he knew that that crippled dude was on par i mean he he knew what he was talking but they're all of these guys say well you you don't understand we can't travel faster than light because once you get approach the speed of light you become you need all the the energy in the universe in order to achieve that you get infinite mass and therefore you, you you can't travel faster than light but at the same time the mathematics is already on the books in order to create a warp drive. Warp drive is a real mathematical thing. And slowly but surely, they've been realizing that maybe it's we don't need as much energy as we thought we did in order to create a warp bubble. I know people watch Star Trek. Well, that idea in itself of creating a bubble of yeah. space time is not something that it is completely within our laws of physics and that, that allows that. Well, a lot of science, science fiction writers were giant dorks. That's why they're science fiction writers. And so they, they yeah. do know a lot about science. So, yeah, like, no, it, there is some real truth to that. Well, and it's and it's just fun. I'm just telling people that oh, yeah, yeah. This, this is good. This is in your news. It's it. It doesn't seem to have a, a partisan. I mean, it's definitely reported by everybody. Sauger w- went off on it the other day and Crystal was just like, crazy shit she what did she say she was like that is some crazy shit i was like crystal ball just says shit they yeah cu- she they did started, they started cussing more on the show which is kind of annoying by the way because i watch it with my kids sometimes i'm like oh crap. <laughs> no she, she didn't say good stuff but i mean it's it's not crazy you're not crazy to think i i have never seen anything personally that made me go i bet them them some aliens I'm just looking at our history, our government's history, and the fact that there's a good possibility that we are trying to understand. It's kind of like throwing the ancient Romans a jet engine and say, okay, make one. Metamaterials and and things made in a zero-G environment are definitely things that we probably possess but don't understand it by any way, shape. We're not getting in these things and flying around. We don't even know how to make them. But our physics allows for these things to work like we think they do. And wouldn't it be great if we actually figured out how to do this? Imagine opening up. It's kind of like with the, the show on a, on a, the, the just fantastic the Expanse. You know, it's they're stuck in one solar system. And then by virtue of, you know, some crazy alien technology, blah, blah, blah. It opens up basically a wormhole to a whole bunch of wormholes that lead, lead them to tons of habitable planets without even having to have 
of faster than light travel. But well, we, we even, in just yeah. in that sense, it may not happen in our lifetime, but it sure would be nice if we could go and be adventurous and be colonizers somewhere else because there's a vast universe that probably has planets that don't have any people on them to push out of the way. <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, definitely. And I, I, I say I, I don't speak for the people, but I do think that before we go, I have to at least throw this one gauntlet challenge down for you. And that is every month, at least once a month, we need some UFO news. It's going to be, you know, lighten up the story load. It's fun. A lot of us don't hear this stuff. So, uh, you know, I would just ask. Yeah, and, we'll, lighten us and I'll try to be more this. specific about a particular uh, incident or an item of data that comes out or maybe share an old piece of data. Um, that's, I mean, all I can tell you is the, the, it was called, uh, what was it? The, uh, golly, uh, you got a computer in front of you. Let's see. I, I do too. Let's see the, the California incident in 1941. Um, it is just one, of, there's actually a movie named after it. That's, that was pretty recent, like within the past four or five years, but, um, they actually celebrate the anniversary of this, not as a ufo event but more of a, a military event um be, because it was a uh, the, the invasion of la i think well no no what is it uh, called? Um, a horrible movie but... <laughs> uh let's see la in 1941 yeah it's called the battle of los angeles oh that's not a good movie by the way no it's a goofy it. movie uh but it's got a lot of stars that you'll probably recognize from first year. actually it's got some of the guys from expanse it's got some of the guys from uh, uh fast and the furious you know it's got a little Don't, bit of everybody that's where that's where you lose it the best but no yeah, no no, no. But I, I, other I, than actors if you look up the battle of los angeles you will see a photograph that was on the front page of the la times and that picture of all the spotlights trained on one thing in the sky, that thing is being bombarded with anti-aircraft shrapnel. And it did not go down. And I'm sorry, it, was, it wasn't 41. It was February 1942. That's pretty and cool. 20- yeah, like I said, we will, we will ask for at least, like I think, like one UFO kind of you know story like that a month. I think that would be cool. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Um, we do plan on doing another show. Um, most likely on you'll get it by Tuesday or Wednesday, kind of depending. There's a few things that we're kind of watching. We're obviously going to stay abreast on the Matt Gates situation, uh, the mm-hmm. Derek Chauvin report. Um, there needs to be more done. We we decided not to talk about um, Adam Talad. Tal- 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 How do you say his name? The 13 year kid. Know. Yeah, I'm not yeah. exactly sure how to say his name. But, uh, we decided not to do this because our last video was all about. <laughs> police shootings and um but we do we're not forgetting that situation it's another story that we're going to cover in the future um but there's a lot coming up so yeah definitely i think one will be out i would say tuesday or wednesday but thanks a lot for listening guys take care